Lauren here, and welcome to my journaling reread series. Today I'm journaling about my reread of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chapter 5, Diagon Alley. I tend to talk about moments that come later in the book series, so spoiler alert for that. Now for this layout, I started with a more involved plan than usual. I wanted to cut out a little diagonally-esque skyline to put at the bottom of the pages. Once I measured the size I needed, I sketched it out in pencil and cut it out with a Fisker's fingertip craft knife. These things are great, but about halfway through I ended up switching the tiny one with the swiveling blade to the larger fixed blade. I feel like it gives me more control if it doesn't move around as much, but obviously everyone's different. Once those were cut out, I glued them down with a tape runner along the bottom edge of the pages. Then I used brown and red cardstock to cut out a bunch of little rectangles and arranged them to look like bricks in the top right corner. This is just such a visual chapter and I'll get to talking about it soon, but I knew I wanted it to look like this, so I think it was totally worth the extra effort. For the last little bit before we get to my notes on the chapter, I knew that I had to use this vintage German Harry Potter decoupage kit that a viewer recently sent to my P.O. box. So I'm gluing on this illustration of Hedwig, since this is the chapter where we meet her, and some wizarding currency, since we get Harry's first trip to Gringotts in here as well. So when this chapter starts, Harry is about to open his eyes the morning after all the fun stuff that happened, and he says, It was a dream. I dreamed a giant called Hagrid came to tell me I was going to a school for wizards. When I open my eyes, I'll be at home in my cupboard. So I had to write that down as kind of the first thing on the page. So of course he opens his eyes, and it's real. It was not a dream. And Hagrid announces that they're going to go to London to buy Harry's school supplies. And that's when Harry learns that his parents actually left him money. Initially, he assumes that he can't afford to go. He's so excited and then is just totally defeated when he realizes that he can't buy the list of things that is sent on the letter. There's also a really cute little moment in here where Hagrid tells Harry that Dumbledore sometimes lets him do really important jobs, and you can just tell how proud he is, and it's super adorable, especially because we know that Hagrid doesn't really have too many people on his side, and for Dumbledore to trust him with such important things is such a huge deal for him. When they're leaving the house, we get a fun little image where Hagrid turns the rowboat into a speedboat, but how did the Dursleys get off of this island if Hagrid flew there and then they took the rowboat back? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they mention it later. Maybe I missed something. Pulling out my handy dandy Tombow Fudinosuke brush pen. This is one of my favorite brush pens to use just in general. And uh, this next section is Harry asking lots of questions, so we get a whole bunch of info very quickly. This is a very useful way for us to find out a whole bunch of things about the wizarding world in a very short amount of time. Among those questions, why would you be mad to try and rob Gringotts? He asks. Um, this is good to know since he does this later. <laughs> also, upon finding out that there's a Ministry of Magic, he asks about it. He wants to know what the Minister of Magic does, and Hagrid reveals that apparently Fudge owls Dumbledore every morning for advice because originally they wanted Dumbledore to be the Minister of Magic. I don't know how I forgot about this little detail. I can't imagine that Dumbledore doesn't already have enough on his plate, but to have to tell Fudge what to do every single morning. I mean, we learned that Fudge is awful to begin with, but I forgot about this particular little detail. Being me, I had to write down the little detail that Hagrid knits a canary yellow circus tent on the train. Apparently Hagrid is a crafter. I mean, I don't see myself knitting a canary yellow circus tent in a DIY video anytime soon, but... I'm always looking for Harry Potter related craft project ideas, so who knows. And the last note that I put on this page before they actually arrive at Diagon Alley is that Harry considers that this whole thing might be just a big joke that the Dursleys are playing on him. He notes that they don't have much of a sense of humor, but also he thinks to himself that even though everything he's learning in the past 24 hours is completely unbelievable, Harry couldn't help trusting Hagrid. And I really like that. I think it says a lot to Harry's judge of character and also to how great Hagrid is. So next, they arrive at the Leaky Cauldron, and it's the first place where Harry is recognized in public since finding out that he's a wizard. Welcome back, Mr. Potter. Welcome back. 
A bunch of little interactions happen when they're in here. He's shaking hands with everybody. We also meet Professor Quirrell for the first time. And Harry asks, is he always that nervous? The iconic archway appears through a brick wall and they enter Diagon Alley. I had to write down this quote because I thought it was great. Uh, it said that Harry wished he had about eight more eyes. Next up is their trip to Gringotts Bank. And I had actually forgotten about the Gringotts doors that have a poem with a warning engraved onto them. Um, at some point when they're there, Hagrid's getting motion sickness and he asks if the carts can slow down. Grip Hook replies, one speed only. We also learned that if anyone but a Gringotts goblin tries to get into the really intense vaults, they'd be sucked through the door and trapped inside. And they only check it for thieves once every 10 years. So don't steal stuff from Gringotts, friends. Also worth mentioning that we get our first glimpse at the Philosopher's slash Sorcerer's Stone. A lot of people have been correcting me, even though it's in my book, it's called the Sorcerer's Stone. I know that it was originally the Philosopher's Stone, and that's how it was written and intended. It only became the Sorcerer's Stone when it was published in America. But I am reading it out of a copy of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, so that is what I will be calling it going forward in this series, just to avoid confusion, especially because I am paying a lot of attention to specific wordings of things, and I know the, that the wordings are different in this book compared to the Philosopher's Stone. Next up, Harry gets fitted for robes in Madame Malkin's, and that is where he meets Draco Malfoy for the first time, who won't stop talking and judging people the whole time. Harry is confused, he mostly smiles and nods, and at one point it says that Harry was strongly reminded of Dudley, which is very interesting to me, especially since we learn a lot more about Draco going forward. Harry apparently also wanted to use some of his newfound riches to buy a solid gold cauldron, but Hagrid talks him down from it. Sounds about right for an 11-year-old boy. Then Hagrid realizes that he hasn't bought Harry a birthday gift, I guess aside from the cake. So he gets him Hedwig the Owl for his birthday. It, she's described as a beautiful snowy owl, fast asleep with her head under her wing, and Harry is adorable. He cannot stop thanking Hagrid. Really, he probably has never been given a gift like this before, so it's really sweet how happy and grateful he is. Then comes the extremely important Ollivander's scene where Harry gets to buy his wand, but the thing that really jumped out at me on this particular reread is that Ollivander remembers every single wand he's ever made and who he sold them to, I just find that so amazing. He's just this brilliant artist who remembers every tiny little detail and he just rattles them off at any chance he gets. Then Hagrid brings Harry back to the train station. He takes him out for hamburgers and Harry's really worried that he'll be behind the other students and Hagrid comforts him. He says everybody starts in the same place and he's gonna be fine. Then he sends Harry on a train home to the Dursleys for another month. What? <laughs> How did I forget this? How is Harry supposed to go back there for another whole month? And how dare Hagrid let him go back there after he saw the way that those people treated him? So to kind of tie the whole layout together, fill in some blank spaces, and also tie in some gold to match that awesome galleon from the decoupage kit, I'm going through with a jelly roll pen and drawing all of these little stars. And initially, they were looking kind of dull and of Took, it took a little bit for the gel pen to wake up, and then I went back and traced over the ones that looked kind of funky in the beginning. So I know that I'm only three episodes into this series, but this layout definitely is my favorite so far. I think I'm really starting to figure out things that work and ways to incorporate lots of color and interesting visual elements to these pages and I'm so grateful that I started this project because this is really something that I wanted to work on and improve on. I am also really enjoying all of your comments and responses to this series. It's so much fun to talk Harry Potter with all of you and it seems like everyone's enjoying this. I also love that a bunch of you have started your own reread journals or you're just journaling along with books that you're reading which makes me super happy. I am always really excited to inspire people to be creative and give you some ideas for things that you can do to kind of let loose and 
have a really low pressure thing that you can work on it in your spare time. And just to tie things up, if you are interested in finding out about any of the supplies that I use to make this journaling spread, I'm going to put a list of them in the video description below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you are new here, it would mean a whole lot to me if you would subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. I am hoping to make more of these journaling reread videos, maybe one a month going forward. We'll see how it goes. But it makes me so happy that you're enjoying them because I am having a lot of fun making them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.